What's up, you too? This is Rob for Trey. Come on, you guys, today, man. Hope you have a great weekend, man. Hope you have a great week so far, man. That was an amazing week that we just had. And we were crazy, crazy trades going on. The market was absolutely insane. We have this choppy action going on every single day. And I actually went and talk about, I went about this and talk about you guys about how the market tend to be having this, you know, explosive mornings, you know, even, you know, upside to the downside. But at the same time, it will take some time to consolidate it, right? Most of the day, do this. You know, there were a lot of, you know, data this week, and we have a lot of, you know, feds coming out this week. Which was, you know, causing this, you know, this choppiness in this, you know, this, uh, this range in the market. So of course, that doesn't mean that you know opportunities were not there because they definitely were. But it was really, you know, testing basin of traders. So everybody, if you notice, uh, I watch you. I noticed personally again, it was people trying to over trade a lot. So I'm really gonna go over that really quick in today's action. And of course, there were trades that I talked about last night, and I told you guys that you know they were they were gonna present nice opportunities on the market and today if you were looking at them right if you chart them out if you were paying some attention then of course you were able to make some money so i'm going to go over those stocks and of course couple setups i want you guys to keep an eye for next week they are having crazy crazy momentum and of course they do have huge range. I mean this, this stocks can explode any single time so i'm going to go over that dd at the end of the video so stay with me so today really quick go straight to the to, to the charts SPY, as you can see, is being consolidating day by day. It hasn't really broke any single level yet. It's just been hanging around this 449 and 450 area. As we know, being above 450, it's kind of, there's a very strong cycle like a level. And as we notice, every time that, you know, SPY breaks above 450, it tends to have like a little pop. Today, for example, went to 450 once and, you know, some sense, and then it came back down. Of course, the volume wasn't there. You know, SPY didn't then it didn't really have a lot of buying pressure, selling pressure overall. It only had like enough to move in the range. But as you can see here, it hasn't really done much. And you know, it's pretty interesting to see because you know, going towards next week, right? This setup seems to we are kind of reached to the peak because we I mean being unable to break uh this whole this week, sometimes in the consolidation, it tells me one thing that at some point a breakout is gonna come. But now the question is going to be where it's going to go because it can we can easily break down to the downside, and as well can break to the upside. So overall trend is to the upside, but again things can change anytime. You know we know this market is very um you know does really moves that nobody expects. It does this you know this 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 change of trends are really quick. So you cannot just think that oh we're going to continue to go up because we can really change this. So just keep an eye on the guys again. You know we we haven't really broke this support. You know, this 449.86, that hasn't really broke all the time. It's just kind of like hanging around there. I think at the most, we will see a pullback to the 448. If we're really going to pull back, if not, we're just going to hang hanging around and probably, you know, retest that 452.42 uh, resistance that we haven't been able to retest for now. So those are going to be the levels for next week. Of course, I'm going to go in detail on, you know, sign this video. So that today, uh, it did present, you know, nice opportunities. Of course, you will have to be, you know, on watch, right? First part of the morning had a nice drop, like has a heavy drop. But of course, as you can see here, all your EMAs were flat, which that tells me that there was no direction on the market, right? But there were the moves today that were very short lived, right? They were not really follow up by, you know, continuation either to the, you know, both sides, either buying pressure, selling pressure. So I think this is why it's very important to understand the current price action. Every single day you need as a trader, Need to look at it, observe, you know, look the tape, look what's going on, you know, if we are really, you know, breaking critical levels. So today, for example, on Tesla, I was just checking it out. You know, we try to trade a couple of times. You know, again, there are some successful and there, you know, some bad trades as well. But of course, you know, it's part of our career. We're gonna make mistakes, and you know, in this career, I mean, the, really, the consistency comes when trying to minimize those losses. But Tesla was pretty good. Uh, there were chances to you know make some money on Tesla once he broke resistance. The first time he tried it out, but you know there were not enough con you know continuation with buying pressure with buying pressure. Then he pulled back, you know, from like a double bottom on the two hundred EMA and then break out again. I went over this level because I actually mentioned it last night. The two thirty five point thirty four resistance needed to break plus buying pressure in order to move forward. So today actually get to do that after the second try. And you see it went from 235 all the way to 237, which is a two dollar move, more than enough really to make a nice 30%, you know, 24% if you're getting what you're supposed to get in. Regardless, opportunities were there, of course, like I said, short lived. But keep an eye on this again. You know, there's a lot of news going on with Tesla. We don't know how it's gonna react next week. 
uh, there's a lot. I believe something is going on with uh, Musk and X with Twitter, uh, with Apple. That's what I think they're gonna like cut out. So I'm not sure how that's gonna you know affect Tesla as, as just because Elon is related to this. So just something to keep an eye on. But we can definitely see that Tesla has been consolidating on the same levels that you can clearly see here. So at some point, it's gonna have to break out, right? So we should just be ready to react to any of those levels. Nvidia. Similar situation here, you know, it did have a level to level play out today. As you can see here, how this is how it's very important to have your levels draw. Now, I can tell you the price action on Bitcoin today was absolutely terrible, man. I wouldn't even trade this. I wasn't even, you know, I didn't even want to trade this because, you know, looking at this chart in the morning, you know, like long pops, long drops, look, looking at the candles on the five minutes, you can clearly see how choppy was this, right? There was they said the days that you as a trader, you do not want to be trading if you're trading these stocks because you're going to get burned, right? The premium is going to get burned. Contracts are going to get burned. So it's just really pointless to be, you know, forcing trades for a couple cents game, right? That's just really ridiculous to me. But so, we, boy, of course, I'm going to go over this uh, on, you know, when the weekend video, per, you know, to prepare you guys to what to expect. But I can tell you guys that I can assume that if, you know, Nvidia doesn't really break out next week, we can clearly, we can see a possible double top Warming right here, so that could lead us for another pullback. And of course, as part of the penny stocks, I went about this right. Remember, I talked about DRCT. Well, I'll tell you guys if DRCT it was just pulling back, it was making new highs, you know, had nice DD. Of course, I did went over these DD with you know, with my students and the alpha community. I, I gave it to them since like four dollars, and we were like riding there since four dollars. I, you know, was looking at it. There were so many shorts in there, they were nice news they beat earnings they had like a 15 price target out and of course breaking those previous highs actually makes this build bullish right you know closing about six dollars makes me think that we possibly we can have more continuing to next week so keep an eye on this one because look at the daily chart it's absolutely crazy i mean the breakout is insane although the rsi is hot it's 84 i think that if the volume stays you know there if the trend stays there remains there i think that the rcd can continue to be rising right so this four hour chart looks pretty strong Daily looks pretty strong and recovered weekly, breaking those previous highs because this one IPO not too long ago. That is actually something to look at out. Usually when this, you know, this thing, this kind of things happen, there is no roof, right? There is no really a price to look out. So you don't know if the volume comes and, you know, there's a small squeeze, this can even go to double digits. And remember, you know, nothing is financial advice, guys. You need to, uh, you want you guys to go make some DD in the weekend, some homework. And, you know, check it out. Why, is, why am I checking this stock? Because it has some good potential, right? So keep an eye on that, guys. And, of course, what else is what? In last night video, I talked about ABBC, right? If you remember, I told you guys, these are day trades. You know, I told you guys, these are going to be, they gave you opportunities to day trade them, not to swing it, just to get in, get out. ABBC gave you two opportunities today. In pre-market, went from like 149 to 1.75. That was a nice 15% right there. Then one market opening, if you were if you were patiently for the pullback, right? It went as low as 1.42 again to 1.65, right? That's another 50% if you know how to play the dips. So this is why it's very important to always wait for pullbacks. Remember, stocks will pull back regardless of what's going on. They nothing is gonna go out forever. At some point it's gonna pick and it's gonna pull back. So then you buy the pullback. Don't buy the picks because if you buy the picks, I'm telling you, you regardless of what's gonna happen, it will pull back at some point, at some point. So you don't want to get stuck on a higher price. You want to get a lower price. And I as well, I went over OTLY. I tell you guys, this you know having some momentum as well. Keep it up because I traded last night, yesterday, and today I was looking at some sort of continuation, which it did, right? It pretty much in pre-market remained flat in the 75 cents. Today it went as high as 83 cents, pretty much 84, like one penny less. But from 75, 73 day to 84, that was a nice 25%, 20%, even 30%, depending on where did you get it. But of course, I went over this last night video. So if you're missing the videos and you're missing the stocks because it's giving you opportunities every single day, right? So, and of course, I mean, the Alpha community has this, you know, beforehand, anybody else. So check that out. And this is the setups that come that I'm talking about. This is why I'm actually, you know, tonight coming out to you guys because I want you guys to make this homework. I have two setups that I'm actually looking at. One of them is PSTB. PSTB, of course, Again, I alert this one. I pretty much gave it a very early to the to the guys in the community, but I do believe there is more opportunity here, right? Why am I like PSTB? One of the main reasons why I like it is because I noticed there was short interest is being very low, 
right? That tells me that the shorts are pretty much exiting the position because they don't want to be here because they know that this can, you know, squeeze. You know, I noticed that there was a three watt solid on the PSTB. I look at the chart, I look at the range. And I was like, man, this thing is just popping, man. You know, it has some more room. We know that the 200 may tend to act like a, you know, like a magnet. I told you guys that many times. They also, there's a fair value gap right here all the way down to, you know, 3.16. The 200 is at 3.29. So that was the range that I'm looking at, right? They also have a conference happening on Monday, right? So that was something to me thinking, oh, this is something that's going on. You know, if they do have, why the director? Because I noticed also the director is being having a lot of insider buying on, you know, he's been loading these 145, 165 dips, 159 dips. I was like, why? He's just very confident. And again, knowing that they have this, this conference on the 20th, right? Because they do have a catalyst. One of the, the phase two with trial enrollment complete, they need to, they're supposed to be presented on November 20, right? So they, something that for me was like, oh, this is something, this something big is happening. So we were able to trade it last, you know, yesterday, make some money as you can clearly see here, but it's still the setup remains intact to me. The trend seems to be good. And I do think that we probably going to see this, you know, over $3 testing that 200 million, of course. Once we get there, that's going to be our target. And, you know, you better take some profits because things will pull back. So be ready for that. So make your homework. Another one. And, of course, you know, this only has 4.46 million flow, which is makes it very, very volatile if volume comes in. Right? So keep an eye on that. And, of course, one of the ones, another one is KOD. KOD, I looked at it and, you know, they report earnings, massive earnings. And I'm actually going to look really quick at this because I noticed that this one, you know, this is a different case. They are heavily short. The shorts are stuck on this. You know, they're trying to bet this. But what happened is that they didn't you know, report earnings. They report they all this. And, you know, they had a very, very nice report. And one thing that I actually noticed is that they had 345.7 million of cash. And that tells me that, one, that we are not worried about an offering. So, we, you know, they you know, usually want to stock those an offerings because, you know, the company needs cash in order to, Again, you know, you know, for the drugs and you know, try to develop new, uh, you know, again, anything from on their pipeline. But in this case, they do have enough cash, so that is not a problem right now. So that's what I look. at. This is pretty good. Also, they do have, uh, not too long ago, one of the phase three data that was reported met, you know, at the primary endpoints. You know, usually when a stocks met primary endpoints, it's a huge, huge thing for these companies. So. We had that, and I was like, look, I mean, this has a room. There is a huge gap on daily chart going all the way in to since 4.07 to 6.86, right? That is a huge gap. That's almost $2 gap. So I think there, there is, I'm not saying that it's going to fill this gap, you know, next week for sure, but it's something that you want to look forward to it. And of course, I was looking, you know, we were able to trace them today, of course. But what I mean to look into this is because they do have several things going on on KOD. They have, uh, I was checking it out, but they have three, three of the drugs, actually. It's, it's not only, it's not even only one. Three of them made, you know, the phase three primary endpoints. So that's kind of like accumulation of good news. And you see when that happens, that is something to keep an eye. You see, Lois looking on this, you know, they have uh, three, three of them. You know, the AMD, RBO, and the MPDR, which is, you know, the drugs that they have. All of them pretty much made primary endpoints. So that is actually, to me, bringing me a lot of attention. I don't think that we're going to see a huge runs. Of course, you know, the float is a little bigger. It's almost 49, pretty much 50 million float. But I think that this one is going to start making the, you know, the trend slowly making its way to 4 or $5. Also, what I noticed is that the weekly chart, it is pretty, it's, it's looking, you know, it's shaping pretty good, right? You know, buying pressure seems to step in. MACD on the weekly chart is already flipping up. You know, they tell me that the bars are still increasing here. As you can clearly see, nice curl up. The RSI on the weekly is a 42. So I think that we're going to have a nice, nice uh, momentum going all the way there to the $7. So keep an eye on that, guys. Again, this is your homework for the weekend. And if you have any questions, let me know. I think we're going to have, I hope you guys have a great, I hope you guys have like a blast of weekend because we had a blast. You know, we bank a lot. And of course, more opportunities are to come next week. So don't want to miss them out. Don't forget to check the video on Sunday to prepare for the weekend. Of course, if you want to know more of us, DM me, take me, tag me in the chat. If you have any questions, leave me a comment on the video. If you got more questions, I got, guys, just check the link in the description as well if you want to join the Alpha community. That's where all my trades happening every single day, my live trading, and all my, my closer guidance to my students. So, I think, guys, take care, be safe, have a nice weekend, 
Don't forget to study. And of course, journal in your trades, man. You got to get to there. You have to understand where you made a mistake in order to improve your trading. All right, guys. Other than that, be safe, take care, and I'll see you guys on Sunday. All right, bye, guys. What's up, guys? This is Rob Petraeus coming at you guys today. If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals and financial freedom you guys are looking for, you need to start investing in yourself. You need to start investing in knowledge. All right, so join me to the Alpha community. I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money. All right, so see you guys.